Germany. I am here in a really small little town. I don't even know because we're going on a road trip to all these little small towns. So I don't even know what this is. Reutlingen. Reutlingen. We're in Reutlingen, Germany today. And I just wanted to let you guys know that by moving latitudes, moving to a different parent on your astrocartography, going 30 minutes south, an hour's drive north, can help mitigate the energy of a hard line. A lot of people know about astrocartography lines, but not a lot of people know about parents and why they're so important. Now, you guys know that I am going through my Saturn return. And in fact, here in Europe, I am living on my Saturn ascendant line, Saturn being on the physical body, but also the sense of self. The ascendant is in the first angular house on a relocated chart, a birth chart. And having my Saturn on my physical body and sense of self, it has not been easy. I've only been here in Europe for about four or five days now. The minute my plane landed, I felt so restrictive. I immediately felt restrictive, felt like I was overthinking things, doubting myself, fear coming up. And I noticed that all I wanted to do was sleep because my physical body felt so drained and tired. Hello, Saturn on the Ascendant. And so Alex and I decided to go on a road trip this weekend to Germany, a three hour drive to explore some little German towns and also get to my favorite parent or my favorite latitude crossing. I lived on this parent for two years and this can be informed based on the birth chart as well. Look at the aspects within your birth chart of the planets and the configurations between planets. I have Sun and Uranus trined exactly within zero degrees. So that Sun Uranus trine plays a part in my map as the Sun Uranus parent. So coming out to this parent has been so much more inspiring, invigorating, authentic, inventive, resourceful, resourceful, and also more active and leadership oriented, as opposed to living on my Neptune node, which is in Metz, France, where I'm living right now. Now you can't change your timing. There's a reason you're going through a transit, whatever you're going through right now. And I have so much empathy and compassion for any of you guys living on Saturn lines or Pluto lines, Mars lines, and going through malefic squares, opposition or returns, I feel for you guys. I'm in the middle of my Saturn return, living on a Saturn line. I don't wanna feel this physically anymore. And I'm planning to travel as soon as I can. But that doesn't mean that you can't help mitigate the energy by going on a 30 minute drive or deciding to base yourself for a few days on a different parent or a different local space lines. There's ways to mitigate this. And so I have found that for me, traveling to these different parents has helped. Now, has it completely eliminated the Saturn energy? No, not at all. I'm still feeling this sense of like time and every decision that I make has a consequence to it. Every choice I make has long-term effects. This sense of restriction in my thoughts and this sense of like overthinking everything and and being afraid of making certain actions because of consequences and time is a very Saturnian thing and it's what I've been going through mentally and physically ever since I got here to France so you can't change your timing this is just what I'm going through but you can put yourself in better environments and this is why astrocartography is so important and why it matters location matters and I'm gonna preach this for the rest of my life because when you're going through hard times you'll still be going through hard times but you can put yourself in a better place that you can really mitigate that energy and feel a bit better in my previous video, I talked about how I still feel called to go to my Saturn Midheaven line going through a Saturn return. I say all this because you've got to follow your inner voice and your intuition. Even if you see a hard transit or a hard line on your map, if you feel called to be there, there's a reason for it. And you need to honor your intuition and your inner voice, regardless of what the map and the transit say. My gut has been telling me that I do not need to be here on the Saturn Ascendant line right now. In fact, it's probably better not to be on this line right now. And I feel it intuitively that I need to be traveling this year to write my book, to do the things I want to do. Not only do not only does my mind know that I want to do that, but my gut and my inner voice, my body knows. And I really trust myself and I trust my body, which is why I'm able to follow that and not doubt what my inner knowing is telling me. So you may be wondering, what should you do when you're on a Saturn line and going through a Saturn transit? I'm talking Saturn oppositions, Saturn squares, Saturn returns. If you've got a heavily afflicted Saturn and you're going through hard transits, this is what to keep in mind. First off, 
get the work done. Build the systems, the structures, the foundations of your life, your healthy habits, your routines, and also the foundations of whatever you're planning or intending to for the future. For instance, something that I'm really doing is I'm setting up structures in my life, email, my team, my business, taxes, legals, contracts. I am working with a lawyer right now and an accountant to get my business set up and ready for this next cycle of my business of building up to 2031 which is gonna be like the peak of my work and my business in this era of energy. And so what I'm doing is I hired a lawyer, I'm going over contracts, I'm going over legal systems, trademarks, copyright. I am going deep on setting the foundations of my life now this month while I'm on this Saturn line as the best way to utilize this energy to its most constructive benefit. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm just looking through details more, thinking more about consequences, more about time, what really matters. One of the things I love to do is I I love to make content online, like on Instagram and make reels. And I'm having a lot of fun with that right now. But I also feel like that's not the best use of my time. It's not the best use of my energy and output. One of the things you can ask yourself is what's the best use of my time? What's the best way that I can think about the big picture of like what is most important and what needs to be done, what needs to get done? For instance, if you find that you're often distracted by little things or scrolling or social media or video games or whatever it is, this is a time being on a Saturn line during a Saturn transit to really get clear on, is that the best use of your time? Or is there a way that you can use more Saturnian energy to move through fear, move through doubts, limiting beliefs, self-sabotage, and also escapism. Saturn does not do well with escapism. Saturn likes structure. And so if you can use that energy, if you can use that Saturnian energy and use it to your advantage and say, okay, I'm gonna find the benefit of Saturn and I'm gonna go for that. Looking at details, looking over the small little areas of whatever you're focusing on, which is whether it's micro habits or contracts or the systems in your life, your business, emails, things like that. And also thinking about what is the best use of your time. That's gonna be really helpful for you going through a Saturn transit. The other thing is to embrace responsibility. I know, as someone who just wants to have fun, I totally understand, but there's something really helpful about embracing the discipline, embracing the work, and embracing the responsibility in your life, whether it's taking care of your kids and your family, or deciding to be a leader and to be a mature, non-reactive, non-emotional response leader in your field or business. That's a way that you can start really embracing Saturnian qualities. Saturn is really great for being an authority an authoritative presence or leader in your line of work, so or whatever it is you're doing. So how can you start to embody that Saturn, that older, knowledgeable, more wise, mature energy in your life? One of the things that I'm doing a lot of to help this energy as I'm on this Saturn line is I'm reading a lot of books on stoicism. I'm finding ways to be less reactive and emotional as I often am and trying to see things from a non-biased, non-reactive stoic lens and also finding the ways that I can improve my life in small micro ways in the morning, my reactions to things, etc. And I find that reading books on philosophy really, really helps as well as meditation, being in solitude and kind of being on my own more as much as I love being with my husband and he's like my favorite person in the world, I'm noticing that during the Saturn return, I do want to be alone more. And it's nothing to do with him or nothing to do with our marriage or anything, but rather I want to embrace Saturn, that stoic leader, that stoic energy and work on myself. Saturn's on my ascendant here in my relocated chart here in France. And so there's a lot of like self work and self introspection so that I can be the best person that I am in all the different facets of my life. And so don't be afraid of Saturn, but also I have so much compassion and empathy for those of you living on Saturn lines, going through Saturn transits, Saturn returns, opposition squares. I feel for you. And if you're going through depression, if you're feeling isolated or lonely or cold, or removed, like there's a barrier in your life and you don't know what it is, I just want you to know that you're not alone and that a lot of people are experiencing this and reach out to community, reach out to friends and don't forget during the Saturn return or Saturn transit time that you do allow some time for childlike play 
play and joy, whether it's a hobby or an entertainment or just some fun thing that gets you out of that Saturnian seriousness and into a more joyful childlike state. That's something I have to remind myself of right now during this time. I'm usually such a joyful childlike person and I have been the last month being in California on my Jupiter and my moon line. But ever since I got to France, I've just been way more serious and way more restricted and way more uptight in a lot of ways. And it's like, how can we move that energy? How can we get into our body work, do breath work, dance, movement, music, running, walking, exploring new places so that we can get out of that energy and into some movement. So anyway, I hope that this helps, that this video is supportive for you. I have so much empathy and compassion for those of you going through Saturn transits. And if you wanted to learn more from me, check out my courses, my astro cartography relocation astrology courses down below. I have a certification program coming out very soon. So stay tuned. If you want to hear about updates and get special offers and things like that, be sure to join my newsletter, my astro cartography newsletter letter which you can get free tips free information writing i share lots of great stories and tips there on my email newsletter and you can get all of that by getting my free astro cartography guide and my free astro cartography cheat sheet down below in the description if you wanted to learn more it's so important for me that i provide lots of free content so that you guys know how to do astro cartography and you're not just looking at tiktok videos and instagram videos and not actually learning and applying this vast in-depth knowledge that Really, I mean, you could spend your whole life studying this and it's just, there's so much to it. So if you wanna learn more, be sure to get that free information and check out my blog down below in the description. I'll include all the links. Have a magical day and I'll see you in the next one. Happy astro travels. Now, Alex is a skeptic of astrology and astrocartography and I, I respect that completely. Um, it's important to surround yourself with people with different views, viewpoints, very important. But Alex, from your objective, non-biased, skeptical perspective, would you say that there has been a difference in me from when we hung out a week ago in California versus how I am now? What would you notice the difference is? Well, you doubt yourself more. You're less decisive, which is a big change. You feel less energy, I've noticed. And it's very surprising because you're not really doing much differently. So yeah, I definitely see a change. You guys heard it from him first, the skeptic. He told you, he told you there's some differences here between when he saw me a week ago in California, which by the way, guys, I felt consistently, consistently so confident and joyous and childlike and I can do anything kind of energy when I was in California. I was in California for five weeks, six weeks. And it was just like, if a doubt came up or a problem came up, it was like, shrug it off, we work through it, we get it, we're over it. Not here, not here guys, not here. It is.